here's the Bible said, I suffer not a woman to teach no use of authority over the man. That's right. T.D. J. Scott, we've been preachers in his pulpit. That's right. Amen. Here's the Bible says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. T.D. J. do not believe in a baptism in the name of Jesus Christ at all. Amen. That's right. In fact, he teach you don't have to be baptized. T.D. Jakes was reportedly arrested after Gino Jennings filed a lawsuit against him. The lawsuit alleges that Jakes was involved in questionable activities, including attending parties hosted by P. Diddy, where misconduct was purported to occur. The allegations stem from a viral TikTok video by influencer Misha, which accused Diddy of abuse and claimed that Jakes was a frequent guest at wild parties hosted by the rapper. The relationship between Jakes and Diddy has sparked numerous conspiracy theories. Diddy, known for his controversial past, is alleged to have used Jakes to enhance his public image while Jakes reportedly sought connections within the entertainment industry. The lawsuit involving Diddy mentions Jakes, although he is not directly implicated in any criminal activities. In response to the accusations, Jakes has publicly denied the claims during a church service asserting that they are completely untrue. He emphasized his commitment to his ministry and stated that he would address the situation in due time. His representatives have also labeled the allegations as baseless. The situation remains fluid, with ongoing discussions about the implications of these allegations for Jake's ministry and reputation. As the story develops, further revelations may emerge regarding the nature of Jake's involvement with Diddy and the broader context of these claims. In his response, Jakes addressed his congregation, emphasizing that he is not perfect and acknowledging his own flaws. He stated, I never told you I was perfect. I got my own flaws and my own faults and mentioned that he cannot spend his life apologizing for things he cannot change. Jakes denied the allegations, labeling them as rumors and asserting that they are unfounded. Furthermore, he expressed his commitment to focus on more significant issues in his life, rather than the allegations being circulated. Jakes also made it clear that he has never scandalized anyone in his preaching career and urged his followers to concentrate on the truth rather than gossip. In a more confrontational tone, Jakes sent an email to Jennings expressing his displeasure with Jennings' preaching style and the public confrontation he suggested that Jennings' aggressive approach was inappropriate and indicated that he, along with other figures, had contacted the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, regarding Jennings' program. Gino Jennings criticized Ted Jakes for teachings that contradicted the Bible, arguing that they deviated from the Word of God. Jennings emphasized the importance of following biblical principles, particularly regarding women's roles in the church. She argued that T.D. Jakes' teachings, such as allowing women to preach, contradicted God's teachings that women should not assume leadership positions. Jennings also criticized T.D. Jakes for not advocating for women to cover their heads, as the Bible states it is essential for a believer's identity with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Jennings argued that T.D. Jakes' failure to teach this violated clear biblical instruction and failed to preserve traditional Christian ideals. Jennings also disagreed with T.D. Jakes' position on makeup and jewelry, arguing that such practices contradict biblical principles. She cited Bible scriptures that emphasize modesty and inner beauty over exterior ornamentation. Jennings argued that by supporting the use of makeup and jewelry, T.D. Jakes was promoting a culture of vanity and materialism within the church. By addressing these issues, Jennings hoped to maintain the integrity of scripture and the exercise of authority over man. T.D. Jakes, a well-known preacher, has been criticized for his failure to accurately follow biblical doctrines, leading to misunderstandings among his followers. This can result in a distorted view of the Bible and may lead to spiritual compromise rather than confronting immorality and advocating repentance. T.D. Jakes' failure to teach what is in the scriptures undermines the authority of the Bible inside the church by choosing which parts of scripture to emphasize or downplay. Jakes serves as a reminder of the significance of sticking to the scriptures and addressing sin even if it is controversial or uncomfortable. 
His determination to hold T.G. Jakes accountable reveals his dedication to protecting the gospel message's integrity and ensuring that believers are not molded by erroneous doctrines. Many believe that T.D. Jakes is more concerned with money, which is why he consistently preaches a softer message. His teachings frequently veer toward motivational speaking rather than conveying the unwavering truth of God's word. His emphasis on wealth and success as proof of God's favor may give the impression that his primary goal is financial gain rather than spiritual development. Many of T.D. Jakes' servants have a pleasant, encouraging tone and avoid controversial or combative issues. Walke may addresses issues of personal empowerment and overcoming challenges, but his lectures often lack the depth and scriptural rigor found in more traditional preaching. This has led some to regard him as a motivational speaker rather than a preacher of God's word. Jakes has established a massive media empire that includes books, films, and television shows. Critics contend that the commercialization of ministry puts profit ahead of spiritual integrity. Some argue that his emphasis on developing a brand and selling things distracts from his commitment to serve God and preach the unvarnished truth of scripture. Many people admire and support J.J. Jennings because he is sent by God and is not afraid to call out others like T.D. Jakes when they break from scripture. His simple style appeals to those who value a preacher who is unaffected by popularity or political correctness. Jennings' messages frequently center on the call to holy living and righteousness, encouraging believers to assess their lives in light of scripture and seek a more intimate connection with God. He is widely regarded as a protector of truth in a culture dominated by compromise and spiritual relativism. Man CLA aiming Diddy Grayton wins in court Diddy's male victims finally coming forward. So I took it because I had sat one down in the other room and then I drank some more and I stayed sitting there and began getting drowsy and started to pass out. And then Sean Combs said to me, I added a little something to it for you. I will get that from you anyway, one way or another and he stated that he would make me an offer to end the case and what happened to me because of other things that he stated he has going on in his life that require his money right now and he wants to sell sell everything off and he made me a financial offer of 2.3 million dollars to allow what happened to me to go away if, if his stuff wasn't truthful why would they entertain it the judge entertain it did he lawyers them entertain it? And did he entertain it? So, so, it may be some truth to it. Derek Cordello Smith, a man who claims to have been grapeed by rapper Diddy in the nines, has recently secured a significant legal win. Diddy recently visited Cordello Smith in prison and attempted to keep the situation quiet by offering to make the allegations disappear. However, Cordello Smith turned down the offer and shared the story about his experience at one of Diddy's parties in 1997. This case has not been widely covered, and many are wondering why Diddy's alleged male victims remained silent. Social media reacted negatively to the allegations, turning it into a joke and causing fans and celebrities to lose their minds over the possibility of their favorite rapper being gay. The deal with Cordello Smith and how he managed to block Diddy from selling off his properties is a growing story that is expected to get bigger. Then, in 2016, while at a party with my wife, I was actually abducted by a successful Hollywood agent. The assault lasted only minutes, but what he was effectively telling me while he held my genitals in his hand was that he held the power that he was in control. You know, the first reaction was to be violent. And I immediately held back. Why weren't you? You're a big, powerful man. Why didn't you? Be Senator, as a black man in America. <sighs> Say it as it is, I think it's important. You only have a few shots at success. You only have a few chances to make yourself 
a viable member of the community. I'm from Flint, Michigan. I have seen many, many young black men who were provoked into violence and they were in prison and then, or they were killed and they're not here. My wife for years prepared me. She said, if you ever get goaded, if you ever get prodded, if you ever have anyone try to, try to push you into any kind of situation, don't do it. Don't be violent. And she trained me. I'll be honest with you. It was the strength of my wife who trained me and told me if this situation happens, let's leave. And the training worked. But has there been retaliation against you for what you are saying now to the public? Thank you for your question, Senator. One specific in incident of retaliation was uh, I've done three movies uh, called The Expendables with Sylvester Stallone. The producer of that film called my manager and asked him to drop my case in order so in order for me to be in the fourth installment of the movie and if i didn't there would be trouble a man named derek lee cardello smith has managed to stop sean diddy from selling any of his properties or major real estate assets in court a judge ruled in cardello smith's favor preventing diddy his lawyers realtors and anyone else from offloading his properties. Diddy and his legal team recently visited Cardello Smith in jail to try to slide him a $2.3 million settlement offer. Cardello Smith claims that Diddy spiked his drink and graped him at a party in 1997. Diddy recently made a trip to jail to offer Cardello Smith a massive payout to keep him from suing for grape. The meeting took place in the Detention Visitor Center and was recorded by Diddy's attorneys, who are now witnesses to what some are calling Diddy's confession. The recorded conversation is standing strong as evidence. And then Sean Combs said to me, I added a little something to it for you. I will get that from you anyway, one way or another. I then passed out. Cardell Smith claims that when he woke up, Combs admitted he and him when he was unconscious. Cardell Smith claims that he left, he never went back, he alleges he filed a police report but couldn't talk about what happened to him. He says therapy in prison helped him realize that he was a victim of- Diddy, a notorious rapper, has been accused of numerous crimes, including rape, drug dealing, and smuggling. Despite the numerous lawsuits and allegations, Diddy has managed to silence the man accusing him of grape theft in person, despite having a list of victims that is longer than his number one hits. This behavior highlights Diddy's recklessness and his belief in his untouchability. Despite having two of his homes raided by Homeland Security, Diddy seems to be a certified psychopath or protected by a powerful figure. Despite the numerous lawsuits against Diddy being extensively covered in the media, Diddy has been largely ignored. Cardello Smith, Diddy's lawyer, has requested a restraining order from a Michigan judge preventing him from selling any properties intended for the settlement. This move highlights the absurdity of Diddy's actions and the lack of attention given to his legal battles. I think it's hard for me to think that a dude with all those muscles <laughs> can't tell an agent to not touch his ass. His ass or his dick? Whatever. Whatever he touched. I just do. I, I, don't, I don't understand. Cardello Smith filed a complaint against Diddy, alleging that he was invited to a party at the Holiday Inn in 1997. Smith was excited to attend, as everyone wanted to get an invite to a Diddy party. He joined in on the fun, drinking with Diddy, the ladies, and some security guys. However, things took a dark turn when Diddy started showing interest in him. Smith allegedly got up and went to sit on a couch, where he grabbed another drink from Diddy, thinking it was just another glass of whiskey. After drinking it, he started feeling drowsy and passed out. Diddy allegedly told him that he had added something to the drink and promised him what he wanted. They arguing real bad. They get to calling each other all kinds of crazy names. This corny dude starts spitting on. I said, yo, you crazy and I told him right then and there, you lost your fucking mind. Man, I had to put her out in the woods. We was all the way out Jersey somewhere in the woods. Nigga put her out of the house. It's dark and shit. I had to go out there and get her. She cried right here. Am I lying, Nikki?
Ask me sister. She was there and her baby father. He was there too. Am I lying, y'all? His mom was there. His mom, yo, I ain't lying. Cardello Smith claims he blacked out and woke up to Diddy, admitting to having graped him. He left and never returned, filing a police report, but not discussing the incident. He later realized he was a victim of grape and that Diddy paid off the Detroit and Monroe police officers to keep the situation under wraps. They did a good job of keeping the situation under wraps. The purpose of it is based on two actions taken by Mr. Combs himself, directly with me here. We did a uh, live one-on-one -on -one visit in our prison visiting room. Uh, there's two meetings within the past two weeks with Mr. Combs on one meeting and then a financial advisor on the other meeting on Mr. Combs' behalf. And he stated that he would make me an offer to end the case and what happened to me because of other things that he stated he has going on in his life that require his money right now and he wants to sell, every sell everything off. And he made me a financial offer of $2.3 million dollars to allow what happened to me to go away. And he stated that he's gonna be selling his property and under the Cal under the 2005 California Civil Code 2881-2885, the creation of liens, which allows out of state justices and orders to cause a, a stop of any title transfer, property transfers in Los Angeles or any other place that he has property. He stated that he wouldn't be able to proceed with that sale. And he did it the day after I served him the uh, suit. And he also said that he won't be filing an answer to the uh, complaint. He said, you can find me in default or whatever. He has a better chance with default than he would with having a restraining order stop. And I said, so you want to hide what you you want to hide your money and stop from being, being quite possibly paid to me if I'm given the benefit of a judgment in my favor for what you've done to me. And he pretty much said, yeah, he said, you know how we get down. Cardello Smith is suing Diddy for $100 million. After filing his lawsuit, Diddy and his associates offered him $2.3 million to withdraw the lawsuit. Diddy listed his Los Angeles property for sale, the same property that was raided by Homeland Security in March. Smith took issue with this and filed a motion for a temporary restraining order. The judge sided with Smith, granting an injunction and putting a 90-day hold on Diddy's property sale. Smith also pushed for a default judgment against Diddy, claiming he hadn't filed a legal response to the summons. The judge informed Smith of his next steps. Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, has commented on the situation with Smith, but his joke about the incident did not sit well with fans who called out Gene for disrespecting male victims of grapevine abuse. Derek Lee claims that in 1997, Diddy raped him. I know. <laughs> he raped a grown ass man. Yo, he was a bartender. He said, uh, and, and I don't want people to think that I think that's funny, but the shit is funny. <laughs> He said, he said, it's sad. He said that he was invited to a party and it was girls there, it was guys there. Things got freaky. You understand? Uh, he's a bartender. He said that uh, he was drinking Jim Bean and uh, Diddy brought him a drink over. And then uh, Diddy told him, I put a little something extra in there and he said, uh, <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry, man. He said he, he woke up <laughs> butt naked with his thong gone. <laughs> no, no he, didn't say, he, no, he didn't say that, bro. But he said he woke up and Diddy told him he had him. He said he went, he said he, he went he filed a report, but they threw it up under the, the, the cops swept it up under the rug and everything like that. So, um, he was suing Diddy and everything like that. So he said that, uh, Diddy came to the, uh, jail and said that, Hey, I'll give you $2.3 million or something like that. Or 23. I don't know if it's 2.3 or $23 million. 
to make this go away. We'll leave this alone the whole nine yards. Just like I just said, he's going to pay. He's trying to pay people off to make things go away for them to drop their suits and everything like that. You know what I mean? And if he does that, if they, they, they civil suit. Drop them, make them go away. What would it take? So this particular dude said that Diddy was trying to sell properties and sell things and stop him from uh, getting his money. And I didn't understand that. But the judge found some validity in what he was saying and said, yo, I'm going to give you a 90-day restraining order against him from selling anything until uh, you get all your paperwork in correct because Diddy was served in the whole nine yards. And as it was said that Diddy and his representative did come to the jail. So if the, if the guy didn't have no, no lawsuit, if the guy wasn't, if, if the, if, if his stuff wasn't truthful, why would they entertain it? The judge entertain it? Diddy lawyers them entertain it? And Diddy entertain it? Fans have been mocking Diddy Diddy's alleged victims, mostly other men, for their sexuality. This has led to a focus on the criminal allegations against male victims and homophobia rather than the actual victims themselves. In February, producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones filed a lawsuit against Diddy naming several high-profile celebrities he allegedly saw at his famous freak-off parties. Some names were redacted, but it is unclear who Lil Rod was hinting at. One of the most prominent individuals mentioned by Lil Rod was Usher, who lived with Diddy when he was just 13 years old and was likely exposed to depraved stuff at a young age. However, people seem to be more concerned about Usher possibly being on the deal now. Meek Mill, who was doing the absolute most on X after Lil Rod's lawsuit was revealed, has been doing the absolute most on X, and his tweets have been so erratic that people are saying the rumors might actually be true. Why is everyone more pressed about Meek Mill possibly being gay than the fact that he might be out there putting his hands on women? Nicki Minaj dropped subtle hints about Meek getting physical with women, and Nicki shared a post on her story saying, you a clown, you do it for the likes. Twitter fingers beat women scared of men, and Meek's former associate came through with receipts saying he saw Meek spit on Nikki and leave her stranded in the middle of nowhere. In conclusion, the focus on male victims and homophobia over the alleged victims of Diddy Diddy has led to a heated debate on the issue. He goes on to claim that Combs paid off police to keep the whole thing quiet. Quote, the defendant paid Detroit and Monroe police officers to keep it hidden, and they hid it very, very well, and have kept it hidden for many decades, but not anymore. Meek Mill's outrage over rumors that he might have been gay and hooked up with Diddy was heightened when rumors started swirling that he might have been outed as gay. Meek's reaction to these allegations showed that he was more concerned about the possibility of being outed as gay than any other serious accusations he has faced. He even went on to accuse the rumors of being a scheme to expose the black image of influential artists. 50 Cent, who has been praised for speaking out against Diddy and claiming to warn us for years, has a history of turning male victims into the punchline of his gay jokes. Terry Crew, for example, spoke out about being groped by a male Hollywood executive, Adam Venetian, but didn't immediately report the incident due to fear of backlash and knowing what was at stake. I then went to get another drink and Sean asked me if I needed something else. I said no and he said here, drink this one and I thought it was another glass of Jim Beam so I took it because I had sat one down in the other room and then I drank some more and I stayed sitting there and began getting drowsy and started to pass out and then Sean Combs said to me, I added a little something to it for you. I will get that from you anyway, one way or another. I then passed out. Adam Vennett, head of the motion picture department at William Morris Endeavor, was dismissed after an internal investigation into a sexual assault lawsuit filed by Terry Crews. Delving ME responded by handling the claim swiftly and not further dragging things out. Prosecutors decided not to suppress charges against Vennett, and the attorney's office pointed out that the statute of limitations had expired since the incident in February 2016. Terry didn't report the incident until November 2017 and later suggested that his case was thrown out because of Vinnett's connections with the LAPD. However, Terry didn't report the incident immediately, as many people, 
including male celebrities, made fun of him, claiming he couldn't be a victim due to his size and strength. If he's allowed to sell his property that he has in LA and the properties that are in his name being used and held by other people in Michigan, then it will cause me harm because I can be tied directly to those properties through loans and through other areas of investment that I did when I was out there and while in prison through money that I've sent. And if he's allowed to go through with any of the sales, I won't be able to recoup any of my monies or anything from him as a result of any possible judgment in this action, if he's allowed to proceed with it. And a, an injunction or a restraining order would help ensure that he's not manipulating and selling the property to avoid this, his responsibility in these matters here. That's what a temporary restraining order would do. It would prevent that from happening. Because you, uh, it's a very serious matter. It involves a lot of money, a lot of money. And, and him selling this is, would help him avoid his liability. Russell Simmons, a man accused of crimes and allegedly escaping to Bali to avoid prosecution, personally emailed Terry Crews to, to ask him to give Adam Bennett a pass. Terry refused to let these creeps silence him and shared a screenshot of the email. Russell wrote, Did he never apologize? Give the agent a pass ask that he be reinstated with great love all things are possible. Terry responded, Dear Uncle Russ, no one gets a pass. 50 Cent then chimed in with an inappropriate meme, referencing Terry's fear after being touched. Terry responded with a classy response, tagging 50 Cent, Russell Simmons, and producer Tariq Nasheed. The comments were made by a generation of black women and men who mock survivors and mock survivors. When Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy first hit the fan, the amount of people who rushed to dismiss her was unreal. Diddy had the audacity to put out a statement denying everything and claiming he did not do any of the awful things being alleged. His lawyer quickly backed him up, saying Cassie was lying and trying to score a quick payday. The narrative started shifting online, but instead of focusing on the real issue, people latched onto the idea that Diddy might be doing these things to men too. The internet turned it into a joke, and male victims stopped being seen as actual victims. Instead, they were picked apart as survivors or vulnerable individuals who've been through serious trauma. This whole Diddy situation has exposed major blind spots and prejudices that we need to talk about. If you're making jokes and memes about DV and sub victims, why didn't they speak up sooner? It would have been the perfect time for other male artists and influencers to start the conversation and advocate for men's mental health and sub victims. Jaguar Wright leaks how Lauren London and Diddy set up Nipsey Hustle Lauren was a plant. Because if you were capable of doing what they're saying that you did to Tupac, why the f wouldn't we believe that you were capable of doing it to Nip because he was about to eclipse you? These years, I, I went to a seminar about death. Okay, you have to tell me. Oh my God. Me this now. I know, like, yeah. Oh, please <laughs> share, please share. Why? I'm a friend. Why were you there? And what did you learn? I learned that no one. Yeah, um. At the studio, finishing up a late night session. We want to just invite everybody to be a part of a glorious weekend because it's sufficient. You know, my brother is putting out the album Victory Lap. Yeah. The All Star Weekend here in LA. Yeah. The love is back. Girl, the text discusses the rumors about Diddy taking out Nippy to further his agenda and suggests that he might have used Lauren London to get his way. Jaguar who is known for her canon of truth, claims that London worked for Diddy HEC and continued to work for him even after he took his sister. She is also close with Cassie, making it a high chance that she was involved in everything. The text then questions how Lauren and Diddy set up Nippy and whether Lauren is a plant. And ain't nothing Honeycomb can do. Isn't it funny how her sister was working for him? Uh. Isn't that interesting? I guess that was part of the payment. Your sister got to get a job working for the devil. 
because I'm I'm accusing you now, Lauren. You work with Diddy to line up your baby daddy. Just no, Lauren London isn't an only child. She has a sister, and her sister was working for the honeycomb. Capricorn. Nip, a 33-year-old hip hop artist, passed away on March 31st, 2019, leaving behind two children. An investigation was launched, and it was revealed that Nip was shot in the parking lot outside the store during the marathon. The man who pulled the trigger was Eric R. Holder, who planned the murder beforehand. Holder was arrested and placed before a grand jury. It was revealed that Holder and Hustle grew up in the same neighborhood and were part of the same gang. Things between them were fine until Hustle discovered Holder's alleged snitchy. Holder paid him a visit to clear things up, but things took a turn for the worse. Jaguar Wright, the daughter of Holder, claims that Nippy was set up by Lauren, who was actually working for Diddy. The official story is that Nippy was set up by Lauren, who was actually working for Diddy. Wait, I didn't even want to get dressed. I was gonna wear sweats. And, Did you, uh, were you really? <laughs> Did somebody, like, I'm not getting, yeah. Did somebody pull you aside? Somebody pulled me aside. Um, Puff. Really? Puff pulled me aside and was like, look, bud. Jaguar's words suggest that London got involved with Nippy after leaving a relationship. Not for love, but on Diddy's orders to maintain a tight leash on Nippy. He also dropped Dr. Sai. In my previous years, I, I went to a seminar about death. Okay, you have to tell me. Will you oh just my tell me this now? I know, yeah. Okay, please share, please share. Why? I have a friend. Why were you there? And what did you learn? I learned that no one really dies and that, you know, it's just an experience in the physical form and we're attached to our personalities, but that we're just souls and that we continue and continue and continue. And if you have a spiritual relationship with someone on earth, you will have one with them when you leave earth. Um, so I did this like two-day seminar in depth, so. And this was how long ago? I had to be like 25. What sent you there? Um, <laughs> Do you find that weird though? I'm weird. No, it's not weird that you would go. It's just, it's almost like you were preparing yourself for what you would have to do. Well, I told with. you I didn't have such a connection to earth at a young age. I know, but you don't find that as like you were preparing yourself for what you were gonna have to deal with. Well, that we're all gonna have to deal with. That's true. All right, very <laughs> Nippy was working on a documentary about Bowman's trial, also known as Dr. C, and Nam dropped the natural healer in his 2018 album Victory Laces 2. However, the documentary never saw the light of day after Nippy's passing. Nick Cannon promised to carry on the good work, but has never delivered. Diddy and Nippy ended up in the same orbit, with Diddy working with Nippy on his last album Victory Laces. Nippy approached Diddy for mentorship, and Diddy agreed, demonstrating his good nature. On American Idol, she just didn't make it, and when that fell through, the next thing you knew, she was a nip bed. Now you want to sit up there and talk about it wasn't all what it was hitting for, and you want to talk about this. If you marry the crip, you seed up. You don't get... Nip obtained the necessary resources to ask Diddy for help, but the answer is not yet available directly from him. Stay using desperate starlet to line up the this that they want out of the way because the easiest way to get rid of them is to put somebody in their bed. The text reveals that Lauren was close to Cassie during the time of Diddy's freak-offs and they even campaigned together for some of Diddy's companies. The text focuses on Nip and Diddy who worked together and shared videos of their collaborations which were mostly in bedrooms and drinking. The text suggests that the two were extremely close and that their relationship was a source of mutual attraction. P. Puff is credited a lot on, on the album. Talk to me just about how that relationship came to be and manifested. Yeah, um, well, first, I co-produced that last record, too. Crazy. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, you know, I got Cut my, another I got check. My, yeah, yeah that, part, you know what I mean? that part. That part. Business. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, Puff, I brought the, I brought the album to Puff when it was when it was pretty much done. Just got his feedback, played it top to bottom, just wanted to see what he thought. And he was like, it's room, it's room on these records to continue to produce. He like, you heard it. That album was already done. It was already complete and finished. Literally, one of the only things that got added to that album was the damn flute on young niggas, on rap niggas, excuse me. 
the flute that was added on rap niggas that was played on the keys that wasn't even played at Diddy's house that was keys played by his homeboy the text highlights the fact that all shots were taken at Diddy's house not the studio and the live in situation with Lil Rod during his album work and Nips giving the album to Diddy almost ready for release. Dang. All of your fucking secret meetings with Diddy and y'all fucking knew that they put Lauren on him. See, I know Lauren London. Lauren London used to sing backgrounds for me back in the day. You didn't know that, did you? Ah, hell no, I didn't know that. Lauren London used to be one of my background singers. She fell in love with my keyboard player. His name is Omar Edwards. Omar went on to play for Jay-Z after me, after leaving my band. Omar Edwards got Lauren London on to American Idol, which put her in position to meet Nipsey. And then she dumped Omar, who loved her madly, for Nipsey out of nowhere. All those skin diddy parties. All of the support that Snoop has for Honeycomb. You been moving niggas out the way, Snoop, allegedly. But you fucked up when you fucked with Nip. Y'all fucked up when you fucked with Nip. Moved him out of the way because he was about to give Dr. Sabi to the world all over again, just like Lisa left our Lopez tried to do damn near 30 years ago. Y'all niggas ain't slick. Diddy kept the album in production for a long time, delaying its release. Some believe it was because Diddy wanted to slap his label's name on the record, while others believe he took control over the entire album. Some fans believe that Bad Boy wasn't doing too hot at the time and Diddy believed Nip could have changed things around for him. Jack or Nam dropped Lauren as one of Diddy's workers, considering their close relationship and the possibility of Lauren working for him. Some fans believe that Lauren was in on the freak-offs, as she was close with Cassie, but never knew about the secretive activities behind closed doors. Several people, including Angela Bassett and La, became super spiritual or religious, becoming part of their brand maze. Lon Crate, Max Shine, and Pam from Total were also involved in the setup. However, some reports suggest that Lauren was part of Diddy's payroll, which could have led to her involvement in the supposed setup. Make it puff like a Quincy Jones or like a um, Barry Gordy, or just hip hop. So I really felt like I did something special with the album. He's listening to every record. He gave me his input on what could make the records that he did comment on all the way classic and just reach that. In an interview with Angie, Martinez London revealed that she attended a seminar on death to prepare herself for a loss. Angie asked why she was preparing herself, and London laughed nervously before answering the question. She believes everyone will deal with loss eventually. Lauren? No, I'm saying mm -hmm. Lauren. Lauren introduced me to Puff. Oh, got you. Got I mean, you. I knew Puff, but it notice the stu the subtle stutter right there in between conversational things. Oh, Puff introduced you to Lauren. Oh, no, wait, no, he didn't. Or did he? Or did he? It was it was more of a personal relationship at the you know, mm -hmm. uh, we was at Cassie's birthday. At whose birthday? You heard it. We were at Cassie's birthday. The text discusses the relationship between Lauren London and Nikki Hilton, a man who lost his father, Nippy. Lauren was preparing herself for the situation and knew about the setup and what was going to happen to Nippy. Another person commented that Lauren was the setup, but did not get the vibe that she was into Nippy. Lauren was paid after Nippy's death, and it is unclear whether she was a plant or not. Despite the tragedy, Lauren had one person in her corner, Diddy. Lauren felt surreal at the funeral, and she was praised for showing her what it means to hold a man down and love him. 
She was asked to show up with her head up, but one part of the interview that is specific to this discussion is highlighted. Uh, with uh, the late great Nip, long live Nip. It's like, yo, man, I want, I want you to like, 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 you know, mentor me. You know what I'm saying? Like, Nip had no ego. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's true. like Nip came to me and said, I want you to mentor me. You know, I want to get into real estate. I want to get in. I want you to teach me all your, you know what I mean? Like your business secrets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, whenever you got questions, pull up. And then on his last album, people do not know this. Somebody tried to jerk me, but I fixed it. I actually am one of the executive producers of Nipsey Hussle's last album. Victory Lap. Yeah, Victory Lap. So a lot of people don't know this. We got them to change it in Wikipedia. Somebody over at the label tried to leave my name out, but he came to me and said, I want you to be a part of helping me finish up this album. And so I was a part of not just the record I was on with him on his last album. He was like, yo, I'm a big fan of... The relationship between Diddy Combs and Lauren London has been a topic of speculation and controversy. Since the time Diddy started using the same nickname for London as her late boyfriend, Lauren, they have been close friends. One person commented about the funeral part, questioning where Diddy was telling Lauren about what to wear and how the conversation was taking place. After the tragedy, Lauren London talked about not focusing on relationships, but instead working on her relationship with God. She mentioned that she experienced pure love with Nip and didn't need to do that again. Around 2020, there were reports about Diddy and London getting together, which some fans may be grateful for. However, Diddy's Instagram presence was a boomer, and he posted pictures of him in London at a party, which appeared to be admiring her. Diddy later realized how badly he had messed up and took down the posts. The damage was done, and reports were going around about the two sleeping together, which was all types of wrong. Lauren was best friends with Cassie, and it is a girl code not to mess with your girls. Lauren also didn't make the choice to sleep with Diddy despite knowing everything Diddy put Cassie through. Diddy captioned the lost files of the pictures, which raised another question. Why were London and Diddy having a photo shoot? Lauren London decided to speak up when a blog started posting about the two of them dating, but fans didn't really buy her words. There are rumors about Diddy wanting to tap London. And if you thought the London and Diddy connections stopped there, you're wrong. According to Jaguar Capricorn Clark, who worked as Diddy assistant, London's sister, and one of the reasons why London agreed to do Diddy's dirty work was so her sister could get the job. But wasn't Diddy executive producer of Nipsey album? Exactly. And wanted him to stay the fuck away from Dr. Sabi's work. Blind, it was a blind corporation that bailed his, his murderer out of jail. Capricorn, a former employee of Diddy, has recently expressed her dissatisfaction with the allegiance to the devil and the negative impact it has had on her life. She tweeted that black women end up being the sacrifices for the past 11 years of her life, and she prays that it ends. Sug Knight also mentioned that Diddy put his hands on Cassie, a young woman who was his personal assistant and had to know about Kid Cutie because she never went to the studio alone. Capricorn left and sued Diddy for the mistreatment paying him $450,000 to keep her mouth shut. However, the most interesting part is that Lauren continued to mess around with Diddy, even after he put his hands on her sister. This suggests that Lauren was close to Cassie, who was dating Diddy at the time, and there's a high chance that Lauren was also involved in the freak-offs. Diddy agreed to work on Nip's album, but threw him to the side due to his relationship with Lauren London. Some fans believe there's some truth to the rumors, as one person commented last year after Nip was killed, suggesting that Diddy wanted Lauren and was in on killing Nip. Another person suggested that twins were involved in threesomes, which may be the twins that Lauren hangs with from ATL. The speculation surrounding Nip's untimely death suggests a connection to a past disagreement at Cassie's birthday party where he resisted taking an oath. Some believe this refusal might have led to his introduction to Lauren London, and his tragic fate is perceived by some as a consequence of not conforming to certain expectations.
There are also those who think there are holes in Jaguar's theory. As one person commented that LaToya London was the one on the song with Jag and was on American Idol, not Lauren. For more information, fans are encouraged to do their own research and consider the facts before making any conclusions.